so getting you a different siren. <laughs> the other one I got's bigger. <laughs> okay. You, I don't have this. You do it. You tell me how to do it. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here this evening with you. My name is Mitch Carmichael. I uh, represent uh, your neighbor to the south, Jackson County, in the state legislature. And it's been my pleasure to represent uh, Jackson County for 10 years in the legislative process. I am now the uh, chairman of the Republican Caucus and have for years stood in opposition to the policies of the uh, majority party in West Virginia that has put us in the condition in which we now live in. 49th in per capita income highest percentage of people on welfare, lowest computer literacy rate, highest illiteracy rate. A, a litany of statistics that point to leadership in West Virginia that has failed the people. I have developed a record of standing up for pro-business, pro-life, pro-gun, and pro-traditional marriage in the state legislature for my 10-year period. I have fought for those things. I will continue to fight for those things, and thank you very much. I, uh, I was mentioning to some of the other folks here as I walked in, it is so, and I know that you all will agree, refreshing to see a constituency group that is energized about lessening the size of government in West Virginia. The Tea Party does that. I am so thankful to have you uh, as a constituency group that cares about West Virginia. The others, it seems, are so energized about the special interest, raising their pay uh, over and over and over. And I just, I guess I want to point to you the, the absolute firm commitment that I have developed from a record perspective for fighting for the causes for which you care. And it's not always easy. As a legislator, and I know Clark and Larry, you can talk to these facts, you have to stare down the constituency group that is that you're voting against. And you know they're going to come after you. And as a result of the positions I've taken, labor groups have come after me. Uh, they've ran ads saying I wanted to, you know, kill fish and, uh, you know, drink dirty water and stupid stuff. Mayfly. Yeah, mayfly, those kinds <laughs> of things. <laughs> Ridiculous things because I took a position that was in for the people of West Virginia and in opposition to their special interest group. And I guess what I'm saying to you is if you're looking to hire a governor that has a record of firm commitment to your causes and is willing to look down the gun barrel of those who are know that you're going to, they're going to come after you, I am the man for the job. I have done that. I will continue to do that. When I came into the legislature, uh, it was alluded to the fact that uh, we were losing doctors because our medical malpractice insurance was out of uh, step with our surrounding states. I was uh, instrumental in fighting for the reforms that we needed to keep our doctors here, and as a result of that, we've been successful in maintaining our medical community here. The second thing that I took on almost immediately is this expansion of gambling in our state with regard to these gray machine parlors that are all over our uh, mm. landscapes. I stood against that. You can Google me on the internet and see the speeches I've given on that issue. They are a blight on our communities. They take money from the poor people and give it to the rich. It is wrong and I will continue to fight against that as your governor. The next thing is to privatize workers' compensation. We need to privatize not only workers' compensation but other elements of our government because as it's been said over and over, government is the problem. We can. The more that we do in the private sector, the better off we are as an economy and the more jobs that we'll create. Ladies and gentlemen, we have such a bright future in front of us. I was energized to run for this uh, office because I have, I have been fighting as a legislator, as one of 35 now and previously one of less than that, for the causes that you care about. I have been fighting for that. I want to go to the to the governor's office to continue that fight and to work to bring hope, growth, opportunity, and jobs across our state. As we talked about in the legislature process this year, look at the position that the legislature has put this state in. We have passed out $70 million of pay raises to public, sir, public uh, you know, uh, employees because they're a special interest group in the, in the Democrat primary. $70 million went to them. 
Then we took $40 million out of all your pockets in DMV fees, Department of Motor Vehicles fees. If you drive a car in West Virginia, your fees are going up aggregately $40 million. Then we gave, the Democrat controlled legislature gave $10 million away to the tracks and to the Greenbrier. The richest component and elements in our state. And we eliminated one penny of the food tax that generated $25 million. It is awful. Terrible. <laughs> and we can change that. The Republican Party, Clark included, fought to eliminate the food tax. It's a $50 million price tag. I am committed to eliminating that. It's a regressive tax on the poor people of our state. And if I'm your governor, it's going away. The second thing we're going to do is our corporate net income tax here in West Virginia is 40% higher than our surrounding states. It practically begs businesses to locate in the surrounding states and Wood County is particularly vulnerable to that just as Jackson County is. We're going to bring that in line and absolutely encourage business growth in West Virginia. From a civil justice perspective, we're going to, I want to elect our judges on a nonpartisan ballot. Why? in a judicial proceeding should it matter if someone is a Republican or a Democrat. It should be absolutely nonpartisan, and there must be this intermediate appellate court to where you get an adverse ruling in a circuit court, you have a right to appeal. Those things, ladies and gentlemen, will energize the state of West Virginia. I am confident that the next governor is in this room tonight. We absolutely have a talented group of people here that can lead this state to a brighter future. It is time for a change in West Virginia. I hope that you can uh, find your way clear to look at my record and support the things that I have worked for over the years. I've been there for you. I'm not going to change. I am who I am. I have been fighting for your causes. Thank you for being out here tonight, and it's my pleasure to meet with each one of you. Thank you very much.